so now I really, like I said, I just wanted to kind of take the opportunity to, um, like I said, just kind of focus on uh, showing you a bit of that texturing again on some of these things, right? Uh, so in this case, we can kind of see this is the UV version. And you see I've got just kind of those that, that, that default material and everything. Um, so in this case, I'm maybe going to just do like the chair here, the, the seat, and then I'll maybe do a little bit of metal uh, just to remind you guys how to do this. Maybe a little bit of color painting and a little bit of a metal property. Um, you wouldn't necessarily do metal for the chair. That might be, you know, uh, wood. But uh, I just want to kind of reinforce everything I showed you um, with the last video, with our last lecture from Tuesday. Uh, so just kind of trying to get to, th to that level. All right. So in this case, of course, we want to be in the texture paint workspace, right? Because remember, we have our workspaces up here. Uh, in this case, I'm probably going to make this smaller, right? Because I do want my 3D projection view to kind of be my more primary view. I also usually like to make sure to turn on the material preview itself right here. Right? Remember, that's wireframe. That's regular shaded. That's material preview. It, sh it more fully shows your textures and all your material properties. Uh, in this case, I'm going to turn off the visibility for the headrest and the legs momentarily. Right, remember, that's just outliner over here. Turn the eyeballs off. Seen that a bunch of times. And now we're down to just you know making sure that this seat's selected. Now remember that red ball is our material controls, and we've seen this a couple times now, even with review lecture for UV and wrapping. Right? So remember that red ball is our uh, material property. Of course, we can go through and uh, play with things with shading and all that stuff, but in this case, we can always just go to the uh, red ball here. And you see there's already something plugged in to the color channel here. It's that UV grid. But you'll notice that it, there is an X right here in that base color section. And we could just kind of click on X to get rid of it. Now, in this case, I do want to make sure that this material has a name, right? Because we do want to start to add different materials to the different objects. In this case, I'm just going to kind of use the default material, rename it. Let's call it uh, chair seat, right? Chair seat should work well for us. There we go. But that's all you have to really have to do is just go up to this area, right? Red ball. We can click on that X in the base color section here. Uh, if your object selected, you should see all that with the red balls up. And then we can go up here and we can actually just type in a different name than material. Um, and that's good for this, right? That's good for the starting point for this. Now, in this case, I do want to create a new texture, right? Because that, that image texture node is still plugged in, right? If you don't have it plugged in, remember, click on that yellow dot, and you can move over to image texture here to plug it in. It's just, in this case, it's already plugged in. I just got rid of the texture that was plugged into it, right? You can actually see briefly, if I go over shading workspace, there's still that image texture node. There's just no texture loaded into it, right? So in this case, I'm just going to hit new. And I'm just going to call this uh, chair seat color. Like I said, you guys are probably fine using 1024. Uh, I know your devices aren't as powerful as they could be. Um, so I'm okay with you guys using 10, the default 1024 pixels, right? That's uh, 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. But maybe you're working on your own computer or something like that instead of the school provided device. Um, if you want, you can turn that up, right? But usually you double that, right? So uh, double 1024 is 2048, right? There we go. Uh, in this case, I do want it to be blank, right? I don't want to pick a UV color, UV grid. I just want it blank. But I can pick the color right here, right? So when you click on that new, it brings this up. You give it a name. You can tell the resolution to be higher, more pixels, right? That's a, a PX pixel. Uh, blank's the default, so generally when you create a new one, you could, you're just creating a, a blank color map that you can fill in with color and paint on. Uh, UV grid's the one we use for UV and wrapping. But I can click on color, and it does bring up this color area here. Now, right now it's black, so usually what we do is we kind of go to the little bar on the side here that goes from black to gray. And I can just pick a gray, and once we do, you see color is available. And that's where I can maybe pick more of a wood color, right? Kind of a brownish color. And then we hit OK, and that creates our starting color map. Now, usually once it's created, you do want to go over to this view right here, right? So remember, you have your 3D painting view in Texture Paint Workspace, but you also have your 2D painting view, a lot like your UV editor, right? 
But in that UV view, you'll actually see that there is right at the top here some image controls, kind of right here, kind of below layout modeling, window help menus right up here. There's kind of this image, UV. Um, but what I could do is see the kind of a, there's a little pull down menu that looks like a triangle and a, a dot, right? If I click on that, you'll see there's the chair seat color. That now makes that the active texture. And also we can just go to image here and save. And then we could save this as chair seat color, right? It's usually gonna kind of give it that name anyways, but you know, giving it a descriptive name is good, right? You don't wanna have them all be untitled because then when you save other textures, it'll save untitled. So usually giving it some kind of name that makes sense is good. Chair seat color, chair legs color, right? Kind of thing. I'll just save as image. Remember, also go to file, external data, right? File, external data. And what you want to do is automatically pack resources. If I check that on, right? It's external data, automatically pack resources, you check it on. When I save my scene itself, it'll save the texture in there. It won't, it doesn't save the painting you do to the texture. You want to periodically go to image here and save or save as to save your texture, right? Uh, if you have the B Painter add-on, which is not free, so I'm not, you, don't, you guys don't need to do it. I recommend getting it at some point if you're serious about Blender because it is a great add-on, at least until Blender has uh, their new texture features they're working on up online, right? Um, uh, but until then, like, it, it comes with some cool features that make some of these processes easier, right? Um, but until then, you have to make sure to periodically just go here and save your texture. But with that f uh, file external data automatically packed resources on, whatever texture is saved will be in the Blender file, right? That's a really cool feature, and it's good to know, and I want you guys to check that on. So that way, if you're moving the Blender file around to different computers, or when you turn it in, the texture will be in there, right? The texture will be in there. All right. So we've got our color map on there. And so now it's really just about texture painting, right? And one of the biggest things we've seen is stencils, right? I, I think I'm going to save kind of the, the view plane stamp feature for our spaceship, right? There's only, I don't want to overload you with too much on the texturing, just enough that you can get some kind of color and texture on your surfaces, right? Um, we're keeping it pretty simple on this project. We'll get more complicated on our spaceship for project two. Um, but remember, we want to use our stencil. Now, remember when it comes to textures, Blender doesn't come with textures by default. You're going to have to find these online. There's always Google searches. You do want to be careful with a Google search, though, because sometimes you'll see watermarks kind of lettering along it or copyrights on it. Those are textures that are not free to use. Um, generally, if there's not copyrights or watermarks, you can kind of assume they're free. Uh, the safest way is to create a free account on textures.com. Uh, don't get the premium. You'll have to pay for that. There's a free account, though. Um, and that gives you the lowest resolution textures, which is still pretty good resolution. And um, it gives you like 15 tokens a day to spend. Uh, and those are safe. Those can be used educationally or commercially. They're royalty free. Uh, so that's a great safe site to go to. I'm, I'm, I know there's others also, but I, I like that one a lot. It's a good one. Uh, but you have to find your own images. Uh, technically, you could take pictures with your phone. Those are images. You just have to be able to, be able to transfer them onto your device. So in this case, I've got a few on here uh, just for our own purposes and uses. Um, and so what I could do then is go to the red checkerboard, right? See the red checkerboard here? It's one of the cool things BPainter does is it actually has its own brush browser. So if you have texture library, you can kind of set it to look for those and it makes the whole browsing for images easier, right? It's kind of That's kind of the area Blender still needs work and what they're working on now for uh, some point in 3.0 series is a, a much improved uh, asset t t brush browser um, layer texturing experience. Um, and that's an area where stock blender is a bit, bit underpowered. Its actual texture painting tools are quite good. Um, and it's just kind of needs a, an easier way. And that's B Painter fills that hole quite nicely right now, though. Once again, you guys don't have to get B Painter, right? It's not free. It's like a $40 add on. I just mention it for those of you guys that are interested, right? Because it definitely does for a super, super minimal price enhance, uh, noticeably, certain aspects of texturing a blender. All right, uh, so in this case, when we go to the little red checkerboard at the very bottom, it's right below the red ball for material. 
And it's kind of like a salmon red, right? But red. Right here, you see there's new. What you can do is just click on new, and it brings this up, and you can just open, right? We don't want to create a new one. We want to open a texture. We want to actually load in an already existing image to paint with. So we go open. In this case, I have a folder called stencils. Now, when you're in the browser, you can kind of go find where you've saved it. Um, if you've created some folders, it'll have it in the recents. You can add bookmarks for favorite ones, right? But you also probably want to go up to here to the thumbnails, right? Because there's lists, two different kind of list types. And then there's one that's thumbnails, right? This last one. Right, that's display mode. Uh, that's display mode horizontal list. That's display mode vertical list. That's display mode thumbnails, right? So that last one with the big squares, four big squares, that shows you the actual images. And this is where I could just go find whatever kind of texture I want to paint with, right? And it could be those woods. It doesn't always even have to be a wood, right? Maybe I want to go with something that's like a leather, but kind of works like a wood, right? So don't even feel like you always have to do wood. Just find interesting looking textures get creative with them. Obviously wood is wood, so that's never a bad place to start, but I think this time I'll use this, and then I'll use this kind of different leather for the seat. So I'm going to open up image, and that image is available here now. Now this is where I can go, and I'm going to make this a little smaller. This is where I can go up to texture area, right? Remember there's these menus right up here. Uh, there is fall off. I like fall off to be smoother, right? So you just click on custom and pull down to smoother. It just gives you a, a softer edge to your brush. Um, texture menu, though, is where your texture's at. You see how it's actually already loaded in here? So you just click on there to find other ones. If you've loaded other ones in, they'll be in here, and you can swap between them as you work. If you want to turn them off, you click on the X. But you'll also see right here is mapping type. And we've seen this a couple times, right? I've already done a bunch of some stenciling for this stuff, so that's... That's really what all of our texturing is going to be about. So these next couple of videos is going to be me boringly repeating myself on different parts of the assets, showing you the same stuff. That way you naturally have some repeat lectures and review lectures already built into the new lecture, right? It's the same basic process. Mapping, we want to switch from tiled to stencil. In fact, my favorite ones are view plane and stencil. We're not really going to see view plane on this project. We're just going to stick with stencil. It's the bottom one. But see that mapping? You just click on it, stencil. And there's some other cool things you would do with stencils that we're just not going to go over. There's only so much you can handle right now, right? But we do want to switch, make sure that's the active texture in the texture menu. Click on the mapping uh, menu right here, pick stencil. And then we move our cursor over here, we see the image is available. Now remember, right mouse button moves the image. Control right mouse button rotates it. Shift right mouse button scales it. Now, I found that the rotate and scale work best if you grab towards the edges, right? If you try to do it in the middle, it's a little bit touchy, right? You can actually stretch these too, but uh, we're not going to go over that right now. So you can adjust the size, right? Shift right mouse button, make it bigger or smaller. Control right mouse button, rotate it. And of course, right mouse button, move it. Your navigation, except for zoom, still works, right? You'll notice alt right mouse button doesn't work. Scroll wheel will still work for zoom, though. Uh, that's part of one of the reasons why I changed my shortcut keys for the stencil so I can get that back, right, when I'm working. But uh, for you guys, the scroll wheel will still work for uh, viewport zoom. And then all you have to do is just left click drag to start to paint. Right, you just move your cursor, maybe alt middle mouse button, move your model a little bit. And you'll notice you can go in here and paint these images on here, right? That's the whole point behind this is that we're showing you that you can paint with textures. And you'll notice it doesn't care about the seams. You see how it's going over the seam perfectly? If you look over here in the viewport, and the UV editor, you see how it painted over that seam perfectly that was there? This is one of the great advantages to, and you'll notice your stencil actually will work. You can do all of your painting in the 2D view, right? But you'll notice that projection painting, right? Painting from the camera actually is great because one, you get to see right on your model, but it paints right over seams like they're not there, the UV seams. Uh, 2D, that can cause problems. So you see that stenciling is really powerful to paint an image on there. And there's other ways, like view plane, that could do some cool stuff. Right, remember, right mouse button moves your stencil, control right mouse button rotates it, shift right mouse button scale it. 
And then you just hold down the left mouse button to move your cursor, and it just starts to paint the texture. So this is a great way to fast, uh, uh, quite fast and easily paint textures on them all, particularly if they're not super geometric, right? If it's a very geometric image, it's actually often better to 2D paint. Uh, but oftentimes your textures aren't, right? Uh, we'll deal with that a lot more on our spaceship, right? We'll have some stuff that cites that a bit there. And of course, one of the cool things we saw the other day as well is I can go in here and I could mask stuff off. So if I hit three for face mode, right? I can go in here and I could just select these faces on the top here. Remember, Q will uh, turn circle select on. And that can be great because you just hold down your left mouse button and move your cursor. Remember, up arrow is more or less, that's your grow, right? More or less. And remember, we can actually go back to paint mode, which is eight. But you'll notice if you go to edit mode here, one of the modes is sculpt mode, right? It's going to be a quiz we've got coming up soon. And paint mode, eight. There's a quick key for paint mode, eight. Once that's on, You'll notice right up here, there's kind of right below texture paint, there's texture paint mode, there's view, but there's also this one that looks like a white polygon and kind of a gray polygon behind it. If you turn it on, that's texture mask. And what's really cool about that, so if I want, right, I can come back in here and I could kind of go to uh, texture X to turn that off because the red texture is still available here, red checkerboard. I can go to new, right? I can open up another one, All right? So I can just click on stencils, and I can find uh, maybe this different leather. That's now loaded in. And because of that masking, when I go to paint, it won't paint past that mask. So you've got a cool polygon masking feature built into uh, Blender automatically. And you see how I can get a different texture on this model right here. Remember, you do want to paint uh, fairly well along normal direction, right? There we go. There we go. And that just gives us kind of this nice little stenciling effect. We can turn off that mask, and we can see that we can easily paint different images on different parts of the model, right? So it's a big part of everything we're doing with this, right? If I want to turn that stencil off, I could go back to uh, X here to turn the texture off, right? You'll notice it now looks like a white checkerboard here. If you click on that, those textures are still available. You can still use them. They're still loaded into Blender. They're just, we've made them not active. And I can always set my mapping back to view plane just to kind of do regular painting again or zoom. Remember, you just paint regular color, right? And of course, I could turn the headrest and the legs back on. And remember, these are different materials. So if I want to, I could go four for object mode. I could click on the legs, right? And I could go to the red ball again. And I want a new material instead of chair seat, right? So I can click on new material, right? It's those two white pages right there. I'm going to change this to chair legs. And in this case, I'm going to unplug, right, because base color has got that chair seat color texture plugged in. I'm going to hit X, right, because that will unplug that from there. If I want, I can create a new texture. I could uh, throw a different color on there, right? You can actually, if you click on the image texture node here, you'll see that there is remove link. That will actually kind of set it back to no uh, node plugged in at all. I could pick a lighter, a darker color, right? And I can go here and I could turn metallic up if I wanted metal. And I could turn roughness down to make it more chrome-like or more brushed metal, right? The roughness, if you turn it up, it's more of like a um, brushed metal, whereas if you turn roughness down, it's much more of like a chrome. So remember, you have these controls here for your materials themselves. You can even just click on... If there's a node plugged in, if you just click on this area, and you, there's an option called Remove to take it out. 
All right, so I'm going to go to image here because we can see that that image is not saved. There's a little asterisk next to it, so save that color. Remember, I've got external data automatically packed resources plugged in. And then I can save my scene, right? Control-S for regular save. All right, that'll be a great place to stop.